been an argumentative person uh, and I've always enjoyed debate and discussion. Um, and so it was during the pandemic, um, obviously I was following politics very closely at the time because it was an election year and I'd just been, I'd just gotten single. So I was single. I was trapped in my apartment <laughs> and I had, I was inundated in politics. So it was like any other, you know, argumentative person in an election year when you've got nothing else to do. I was arguing with anybody I could confront. I didn't have Twitter at the time because I was very boomer in my me social media. Um, I was arguing a lot on Facebook and I, I caused quite a, I contributed to, to many uncomfortable Thanksgiving dinners, shall we say. Um, and some acquaintances of mine introduced me to <coughs> left alternate media. So I'd, I'd, I went through a stint actually, and this is another thing, this is part of the reason why there's a thesis I would argue to most of my videos. I unfortunately went through a phase in my life where I got sucked down the enlightened centrist route. So even though I despise Donald Trump, I voted for Secretary Clinton, and there was a no-brainer, there was no choice. The worst, the Democratic Party on their very worst day, I knew was better than Trump's Republicans. So I voted for Clinton. Don't regret it at all. And then because of how YouTube algorithms work, I just, I got sucked down this pipeline because I, I saw somebody recommended, I think it was Ben Shapiro. And again, I'm an argumentative person. I love to debate people. And I was like, damn, okay. I wish we had a left Ben Shapiro, a liberal Ben Shapiro. And what I didn't know was on the other side of that algorithm, you had Kyle Kalinske, Sam Cedar, Destiny, David Pakman, Brian Todd. Like I didn't know because the algorithm funnels you. And so then it fed me Jordan Peterson. You know, that... Uh, that uh, channel four interview. So you're saying, which by the way, that was when Jordan Peter Peterson was much saner than what he is. And that interviewer was very bad faith. So I was very sympathetic and just one thing led to another, but I had no idea that left version existed. So a friend finally was like, dude, have you ever checked out secular talk? Have you ever checked out destiny? Have you ever checked out uh, David Pakman, Sam Cedar majority report? And so then I started to listen to them during the pandemic. And then I had friends tell me like Josiah, um, you've got some disposable income, you're single, you've got nothing else to do because you can't go anywhere. You should try getting into politics and political streaming and stuff like that. So I tried streaming and it was awful. I hated it because I'm actually not really that big of a video gamer. So I was like, what the hell am I going to do for four or five, six hours? I tried it and it was awful. And so then um, I started to consume more content. And then I, a guy named Luke Beasley reached out to me and Luke Beasley is a young content creator is bigger than I am. He also recently experienced another growth. And even though there's a colossal age discrepancy between us, he kind of became my content creation mentor. Um, and then destiny was an influence to a secondary extent as well. He, he also gave me a platform by being so, you know, open to, uh, to small content creators. And so between the two of them, I started to like, sharpen my arguments, sharpen my positions, and especially from Luke, you know, craft a, a process by which to, to really blow the channel up. And my goal is, um, I want for personal goals, I wanted to both have the experience and also get to a point where I could do it full time. And I finally got a chance to do that in February, I quit my job. And now I do this full time in terms of my aspirational goals. I really wanted to help beef up to the extent that I could at all left or liberal leaning political commentary. I feel very strongly that there has to be a heavy and powerful counterweight to the Daily Wire, to Steven Crowder, to Tim Pool, to you know all these people. And I am a, also a big believer um, that there is a market for a harder, more ruthless side of the left. And, and side of the Democratic Party, because we're too often seen as this, these feckless, you know, um, doormats, right? The, the, we just let people run roughshod over us. And I look at all these wildly successful people on the right, who also, even though their policies, I, I was appalled by the attitude I really liked. I liked that Ben Shapiro would be confrontational. Obviously, tens of millions of people love that about Trump. And so I'm thinking, what if we can actually like take that? What if we bully the bullies and what if we make it clear that false equivalence is stupid and make fun of it and condemn it and train people to not just default to well both sides are the problem 
maybe there is something that that could be successful. Maybe that could hype people up. It hyped me up. And maybe there's like a, a market for that, an appetite for that. Who are like, yeah, I don't want to be embarrassed about being a liberal or a progressive. I don't want to have to apologize for voting Democrat. I really want to stick it to Republicans who are ruining this country. The Republican Party, in terms of its elected officials, are destroying this country. They hate this country in a lot of respect. And they're also victimizing their own base. Again, most of my family members and friends are conservative. I think they are also victims of people like Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump, and people who who do not better rural Kentucky. Kentucky is still one of the most impoverished states in this country. Mississippi, Alabama. It's like what is what have Republican leadership ever gotten you? And so it's like okay, maybe if we lean into some of that attitude, and we're not just like oh golly gee sorry I hope I didn't offend you like we're. We're like, no, damn it. These are our values. These are our convictions. And if you're a bully, if you're going to bully minorities and women and trans people, we'll bully you. And we're better bullies than you. And we'll beat you in the argument. We'll dunk on you. We'll make you cry until you concede and join the rest of civilized society. That's my goal. So that's why, that's why that, again, that's a huge thesis of my content that I think it's so important for Democrats to have a bit of a sharper edge. Yes, allow a road to redemption for people who change their minds. We can't be complete. We, we believe in rehabilitative justice on the left and also has to extend to lifelong conservatives. But we have to make it clear things have to change and we're not going to be meek and timid and feckless.